Mr. President, happy birthday. I want to tell you that it's been a great honor and a wonderful experience to be here during these days. I, I want to start by saying that I do not agree more with what Ronnie has said. Uh, you cannot talk about the global economy without talking about Asia and China in particular. And this is especially relevant for Latin America, as many Latin American countries now rely heavily on China. For instance, for Chile, my country, China is the main trading partner. In 1990, 20 years ago, about 20 years ago, exports from, uh, from Chile uh, to China were only 2% of Chilean exports. Now they are 25%. Uh, in at, in the uh, export to the Asia Pacific region now represent close to 70% of, uh, of, of Chilean exports. Plus, okay. Um, another fact, the share of emerging market economies in world output, if you measure it at PPP according to IMF figures, went from 30% in 1990 to about 50% now, and it will go up to close to 60% by the end of this uh, decade. China also, if you measure at PPP, will have the largest economy in the world by the end of this decade, also uh, according to IMF uh, figures. So uh, Asia, China in particular, is very, very important for Latin America and for my country, for Chile. Uh, it's becoming, as I said, the main trading partner. Now, um, Latin America, in general terms, has been doing quite well during the last decade. Growth has been high. There's been convergence uh, to the living standards of the advanced economies. Uh, unemployment has been low. There's been a reduction in poverty, a growing middle class. Nonetheless, Latin America is not an homogeneous region. Um, there is a lot of heterogeneity. And I, like, I like to think of Latin America and think of the Pacific coast and the Atlantic coast, although there are some countries such as Mexico that have both coasts. But in general terms, I would say that the Pacific coast is doing much better than the Atlantic coast these, uh, these uh, uh, days. We do see big opportunities in the Pacific region, as I was mentioning, uh, and that's the reason why regional networks are forming in the west coast of Latin America to seize these opportunities. Recently, Mexico, Colombia, Peru, and Chile, four countries that have similar economies, market economies, open economies, have agreed to uh, what has been called a Pacific Alliance, uh, which aim is basically to improve uh, trade among these economies to um, enhance uh, integration and to seize the opportunities that uh, is given to them since they are in the, looking at the Pacific. We also see uh, in Latin America that, uh, Roy was also mentioning that, a, a multi, uh, he, he mentioned a bipolar world, I would say a multipolar world uh, uh, which is less dependent on, the, on one country. Uh, for instance, in the recent, in the recent uh, financial crisis, there were many countries, many emerging market economies, many of them in Latin America that did very well. For instance, my own country, Chile, after having a small recession in 2009, has been growing at 6% over the last three years. And unemployment is at record lows, and we expect that growth to continue in the future, probably this year somewhat lower, but still high growth. Peru, Colombia, and Mexico are also doing uh, very, very good. And the reason for that is that despite the stagnation in the US and Europe, there's a region in the world, the Asia Pacific region, that has been very dynamic. And we have taken advantage of this dynamism, and that's 
the basic reason why our economies have been growing at high rates. As Steve was mentioning before, this is very important for resource countries uh, since uh, China is the major consumer of commodities in the world. Now, having said this, I, I want to finish by mentioning that, uh, of course, we do have many challenges. I just want to mention two of them. The first refers to need uh, to achieve inclusive growth. Latin America is a region where income distribution is very uneven. We have a, mid, a growing middle class. Uh, a lot of people coming out of poverty, uh, they are seeing the opportunities that are open to them. They are getting benefits that were way beyond reach some time ago. Uh, but uh, if we do not improve our income distribution, there has been some improvement lately, but it's still very uneven, then there's a risk of political backlash. And here you have a trade-off, because on the one hand, if you want to do it too fast, you may end up with macroeconomic imbalances and then economic stagnation. If you do it too slowly, you delay it for too long, you can have this political backlash and it will also produce economic stagnation. The second, of course, and I will finish here, is the necessity to continue for fostering productivity so as to achieve, to continue achieving high economic growth. Thank you.